There is no question that polarization is a reality of our culture today. In today's episode, I want to acknowledge that, but I also want to talk about how at St. Philip the Deacon, we approach life in a way that means it doesn't have to be the headline. Stay tuned. Hello friends, Pastor Tim Westermeyer here, Senior Pastor of St. Philip the Deacon Lutheran in the western suburbs of Minneapolis. Good to be with you today as always. We're taping this the day after a little game called the Super Bowl. You may have heard of it and of course there's the game itself and then there's all the ads uh, which I thought this year actually were quite entertaining. You may have seen one <clears throat> about some mixed nuts that was sort of a playful and humorous uh, way to talk about a, a very serious problem in our culture, namely of, of our polarization on any number of issues. And I was, even without that ad, I was kind of thinking about that for an episode today for a couple of reasons. Um, one is that we recently hosted uh, Bishop Michael Curry, uh, the first African-American uh, presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church for our Faith and Life series. This was just a couple weeks ago. We'll link to his talk if you're interested. Uh, he, again, is an African-American man, um, descendant of, of slaves. He knows something about segregation. And he made a very interesting point about how now that we're past Jim Crow laws and four segregations of schools and stuff, by a long shot, thank God. We are now in our culture and the country creating a different kind of segregation, what he called a segregation of like-mindedness, where we sort of go into our corners with the people who agree with us about whatever the issue or topic is, and then we you know, stand opposite those who disagree with us, who go into their own corner. I thought that was a very interesting insight, and I assume that those of you listening to this would probably agree with that. So that's one reason I was thinking about it. Another reason I was thinking about it is we actually held our annual meeting here at St. Philip Deacon uh, yesterday, Sunday the 13th of February. And you can find that, by the way, too, if you want to watch it. And one of the things we talked about as sort of a narrative of this particular congregation um, is one of, I think, the signs of health of St. Philip the Deacon, which is that we push against uh, that kind of polarization in our church community in the sense that we know for a fact we have people on all sides of all kinds of issues, but we welcome all of them here in, uh, I'll call it a big tent, recognizing um, that the litmus test for being a Christian isn't what you believe or think politically, uh, and frankly there isn't really a litmus test for Christianity. It's, it's a it's a conviction, a communication, a promise that God loves you. And so I, again, am very um, grateful that here in this congregation we've been able to gather people uh, from all kinds of political persuasions and come together here in this place in a shared mission where those differences are no longer the most important thing. And by the way, this is a very biblical thing. Um, in the Council at Jerusalem, in the very earliest days of of Christianity, of the Christian movement, uh, there were big differences. This is in the book of Acts. Uh, as the, this early movement was trying to figure out who are we and what do we believe, and, and part there was one contingent saying, well, I think we're basically still Jewish with all of our dietary and other kinds of laws, and we should really follow those. And then there were a bunch of folks who were non-Jews who were saying, yeah, I don't think that's what constitutes Christianity. That sounds to us 2,000 years later like a trivial difference. It was a major difference. And what they came to realize is, oh, um, maybe we get to all play in the same sandbox together and, and have those differences and still coexist and work for God's mission despite those differences. I'd like to think that we are carrying on that um, in 2022 here at St. Philip the Deacon. Um, and I actually was going to lift up some thoughts about that from an author named Marilyn Robinson, but it occurs to me that maybe I should hold those for the next episode when we can look a little more closely at what she has to say about a very similar issue written not recently actually, but all the way back in 1996, I guess 
depending on your perspective, that's kind of recently. But it certainly predates the kind of polar, polarizing forces that we've been experiencing in the last, um, let's call it five to 10 years here in the country. So maybe stay tuned for that. Um, in the meantime, if you have thoughts about this issue or ways that uh, other communities have been able to find ways to stay connected despite that polarization, I think it's something we need deeply in our culture today. And we can learn from one another as we move forward into what I pray is a hope-filled future in which God can show us a path where we come together despite those differences. Thanks for being with me as always. Be well, stay in touch, and God bless. Mm -hmm.